careful, that's going to poke your eye out. Here's your look at the Hasbro Kenner, the real Ghostbusters Bug Eye Ghosts. Hit on the middle back for eye popping action. Before we get a closer look at Bug Eye Ghost, the first thing we're going to want to do, he's a little bit smaller, but we're still going to measure off how big he actually is. I'd like to as well thank the folks over at Hasbro that provided a sample of Bug Eye Ghost that we could have a look at in this review. Taking, like I said, that tape measure, putting it right to the very top. Bug Eye Ghost is small and he's three and a half or 3.5 inches tall. We can switch that over to centimeters, revealing that he's nine centimeters exactly. Of course, I'm sure it would be helpful to see how it looks next to other figures, so we can bring in some of the other real Ghostbuster figures that we already looked at. There's Egon Spangler, there's Peter Bankman. On the other side, we can bring in Winston Zedmore. Part of my arm, by the way. There he is next to Ray Stance. And I guess there's another comparison too. Sorry, we'll just move these other two over to the side. We can also bring in the previously looked at as well, Fearsome Flush. Give you guys a good idea. They're definitely different sizes from one another, and of course, with that, they also have different gimmicks. A gimmick on Bug Eye Ghost has a rather eye-popping experience that we'll get a closer look at in a second. Before we do that, though, let's get a closer look at Bug Eye Ghost. Now, this is a toy I vividly remember seeing in toy stores. Specifically, I think it was either Toys R Us or Kmart. I remember very much seeing this sitting on the shelves. I think the packaging would have stayed around the same to what we got here with Hasbro's re-release of him. But inside, he's essentially just a squishy toy. This whole back section here, this is all a soft, similar to something you would give to a dog. I'm sure to chew on, you wouldn't want to probably give Bug Eye Ghost to a dog. But it's a very like, soft material, very soft rubbery plastic. It does have some really nice detailing done to it, even on the back area that is the so squishy side of things. See, so he has a couple of horns, some nice vein work on the side of this plastic. Very, very nice. And of course the air has to go somewhere, so there usually is a hole on the bottom of here, but actually there isn't. I guess it's more to the trap all the air inside, so that the release of it is when the eyeball pops out. He does have plastic solid arms, so that's the only thing that's actually different about this guy, so it's not all completely that soft, squishy plastic. He does have actually rather rigid plastic for his arms in that nice grabbing pose. He also does have posability, so he's not just a staction figure that has a gimmick. No, he actually does have moving arms, which is a nice touch. I do like the coloring also on this guy. He reminds me of a toy line, and I'm drawing a blank actually coming up with the name of it. Is it Boglins? Boglins from the 80s? They were like... Kind of, I don't know what you would consider them, like trolls. Boglins, I think, were the name of them. It kind of reminds me of Bo uh, Boglin. Bright green eyes. Equally bright yellow teeth, as you can see as well, sticking out. And, of course, the big thing about bug eyes, he's got one big giant bug eye. The gimmick is supposed to be the case where you're supposed to, like, karate chop. You don't have to karate chop, but if you want to have some more fun with it, you're supposed to kind of hit it about midway about halfway across the boat, the ghost. And what's supposed to do, in theory, is it's supposed to then shoot out like a rocket ship, that eyeball across the room. Well, it only goes so far because it's attached to a string on the inside. Just to show you what I mean, I'm just going to take my hand here, and that's what it's supposed to do. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Couldn't you have just actually squeezed Bug Eye Ghost and he would have done the exact same thing? Well, no, sadly, he's that he doesn't. Let's just release the eyeball here for a second. Ravel it back up. If you just just squeeze it really, really hard, it doesn't seem that like it has enough force behind it. You, again, literally have to <laughs> karate chop it or just push down really, really strong in a very abrupt, rough moment, rough action, and it pops in and then the eyeball out. The eyeball actually inside is a solid, not quite solid, it's actually two halves. You can see have been sandwiched together. It's got some nice vein work on the outside there, and it's attached by a string. They probably did this as a safer means so that the ball didn't just escape somewhere under a couch somewhere, and then maybe that same dog that you probably shouldn't be giving this toy to would then start chewing away on the ball. And then, of course, there's the inside of Bug Eye. You can see it's tied by a knot on the very back of the toy. When you are putting it back together, you're just going to snake spiral it way back into the body and then just push it down like that. 
It's a very simple gimmick. I mean, it's I don't think it's as elaborate as Fearsome Flush, for example, but it's a really neat toy. I just kind of wish that the gimmick, Wah! I kind of wish that the gimmick worked a little bit better than what it did. Now, me, I'm considering myself a somewhat average build, an adult who has some strength behind, I think, what my swing is on my arm. I can imagine a kid having a little more difficulty to this. I wonder if kids just eventually just said, oh, forget about it, and started just stomping down on it with their feet, springing then the eye out. The other means I guess they could probably have done is just put like a little lever or button on the back that had a spring on the inside, but that's something probably not something you want to be, you know, be a little bit more difficult, I'm sure, back in the day. There's always the hazard that, of course, this eyeball would spring out too hard and end up hitting some kid in the eyeball. Probably one of the other reasons why there's a string attached on the inside of it. Some of you may have laughed when I described the action that one should make as a karate chop in order to release the eyeball from the socket of Bug Eye Ghost. Let me just now draw everyone's attention, if I can, to the bottom left corner of the package artwork there. This is vintage package artwork, by the way. What is that child doing with his very small, tiny hands? You can see that there's kind of a waving action showing that where his previous fingers were, he's karate chopping. Ka-chow! But halfway across the body, kind of around the spine area of Bug Eye Ghost. I'm sure that would probably paralyze him, but that's the way to spring the eyeball out. You'll also see something that I failed to mention in this review that I can actually kind of hopefully rectify a little bit. Bug Eye Ghost apparently can also hold his eyeball in his hand. I find that really disturbing. I mean, ultimately, when you're boiling everything down, Bug Eye Ghost doesn't have as much of a cool gimmick as Fearsome Flush. He's sort of an underwhelming gimmick because it doesn't really work that very well. I mean, you could put a lot of pressure on it. I think a lot of kids just probably back in the day just stomped all the time on their Bug Eye Ghosts until eventually they probably probably just ruined the toy. But just karate chopping alone, I don't think is nearly enough. That, that kid's going to have to use a lot stronger strength in order to fire that projectile eyeball, at least as far as that rope will actually allow it to. It still has at least posable arms, so there's something going for it. And you know what? Even though it really is just a glorified dog toy, it's not that I'm really saying that dog toys are a bad thing, but I mean, just the fact it's squishy. It, short of the fact it doesn't go ee, 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 when you actually squeeze it, it's basically just a, a squishy toy with posable arms. But it does have some really nice paint going for it as well. It is basically just boiling down to trapped air. And like anything else, if you're going to have something with trapped air and you put pressure against it, it's going to shoot that... That era, it works actually the same thing with individuals too. You don't, although I don't think a kid would want to karate chop, you know, Uncle Ted's stomach. His eyeball probably isn't going to be popping up, but something disastrous is probably going to result as, as a result of that. But big thank you. Let's get away from talking about gas. Big thank you to the folks over at Hasbro that provided this sample of Bug Eye Ghost that we could have a look at in this review. Did you ever own this toy? If so, let me know down below in the comments section. Um, I never had this one, but I remember very vividly that it was at Kmart. That's the place where I saw so many of the real Ghostbusters. G.I. Joes were basically lining the shelves across the sideways, and, well, across the length of the shelf, and on the very end of the shelf, like the end caps, used to work retail. The end caps would have been all the real Ghostbusters stuff. That's where I found the ghost trap. Went back again, I had the money in my hand, and it was gone. I went actually to a clerk, and I, I said in my very soft soft child voice. Excuse me, sir, do you have any more ghost traps? And you know what he said to me? He said he didn't know. I don't even think he would even bothered looking in the back. He was off to lunch. This little punk kid walked up to him asking me if there was another one of these things. He had no time for that. He, anyways, that's the, that's my takeaway memory from that. I asked the guy and he said, I have no idea. Good times. A big thank you again, like I said, to Hasbro for pro providing some of the real Ghostbuster toys that we're having a look at in these reviews. Hey now, if you are new to this channel, didn't mean to startle you with that hey now. If you are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and if you do so, be so kind. If you be so kind, make sure you're coming back to this channel because we are going to be looking at some more real Ghostbusters toys. Yay! We are going to be looking at the Ecto-1 too, and I'm really super excited to have a look at that. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.